Good day. Thank you for joining us. Exceptionally, we are coming to you live uh, today, Saturday, from 11 o'clock to 12.30 because of the World Cup match. But first, let's start with our introduction. This day, government announced 12.7 billion francs CFA to rebuild areas destroyed due to the Anglophone crisis in the northwest and the southwest region of the country. The money will be contributed by Cameroonians, members of government, and equally the state treasurer as well as uh, development partners of the country to assist equally refugees and internally displaced persons in the northwest and southwest of the country. Prime Minister Filimoya made the announcement on World Refugee Day, that was on the 20th of June of this year, calling on Cameroonians uh, to participate in assisting those that have been affected. This is coming when President Probias once again this week violated the constitution of the land by not announcing parliamentary and municipal elections. I'm Dominique Bemengwa Kimo, and this is Newsroom. Get our top stories for the day with our headlines put together by Regina and Lake Itada. The government of Cameroon graduates from denying the existence of the Anglophone crisis to creating commissions and finally to putting in place a humanitarian emergency plan. 12.7 billion francs CFA to heal the pains created by man-made killings setting ablaze of houses and general torture. Government intends to harvest the money from Cameroonians, foreign partners and the state's treasury. Newsroom this day provides a detailed analysis of the humanitarian plan while examining its role in permanently resolving the Anglophone crisis. World Refugee Day 2018. Over 43,000 Cameroonians are amongst the 68 million refugees around the world today. These compatriots continue to face threats of food, water, health care and shelter with the government and other opposition political parties still at the level of announcing what they would do to assist refugees and other internally displaced persons. The plight of refugees and internally displaced persons leaves no one indifferent. When and how elections will take place in Cameroon remains uncertain. The two legislative bodies have not been so transparent in what will be decided. There are high indications of an imminent postponement of the mandates of MPs with some criticizing the move as an egoistic reason by the regime to maintain its iron fists on the people. This is Newsroom on Canaldo English, trusted for information flow and analysis. Thank you so much, Original Ike Tada, for giving us uh, the diary of what I've been making news uh, this week. In the country, we bring to you information happening uh, this day as far as news is concerned around the country and the world. A taxi driver and the two other passengers shot dead yesterday at my four Unkwen, that is in Bameda, in the northwest region of the country, by the military. The information or the incident caused a lot of panic with several persons in the northwest of the country, especially in Bameda, that stay in their houses, several gunshots heard in several quarters was especially Bambili that was uh, yet throughout uh, last night. And equally suspicious of poor access to Facebook and other social media platforms in the northwest and the southwest region of the country with Facebook users complaining throughout the night. Equally, there have been a gunshot in Moyoka. In the southwest of the country, as uh, three persons have been shot dead at this morning around 6.30 a.m. when they were standing at the point to get a bus uh, moving towards Boya. In the southwest, information indicate that uh, people have remained in their houses in Moyoka subdivision as uh, the military continue to shoot indiscriminately, uh, searching for separatists. Meantime, uh, several neighborhoods have been flooded uh, this day in the city of Douala due to the rain uh, that have battered the city since last night. We are thinking about Bona Prison that have been inundated, New Bell, Bamiliki, as well as some parts of Mabanda at the Douala for municipality. And equally, we got information that uh, the first assistant mayor of Tuba Council, that is in the northwest of the country, by name Shekelem Boniface, reportedly kidnapped in the northwest of the country. He is uh, from Babanki, 
He was uh, taken in his residence in Babaki, Mesam Division of the Northwest of the country. And the uh, information on the social media indicate that uh, Ayuk Tabejilios and 46 others are taken in Nigeria. That was generally this week or generally this year and they brought to the country. I expected to meet their lawyers next week. But when you soon contacted one of their lawyers, he has denied the information, which I keep you informed as it unfolds there. We receive our guest for this program this day. Let's receive Ernest Nkenga Fak, you are a health specialist or health safety officer and people a youth activist from the southwest of the country. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Meme. This is the second time you are attending this room. Once again, the question many people are asking is, what is the situation now between Boya and the Kumba, where transportation of buses and the vehicles have not been easy throughout uh, the past six days? Yeah, it's really a tough situation now in the southwest, as everyone must have uh, uh, known through their family members and relatives. It's not easy now because you see, uh, for the past uh, one week now, people have not been able to do their regular activities coming from southwest uh, Boya to Bamenda or uh, to Bamenda to Manfe. It's not easy. All eight, even to leave Boya to Kumba, it's not uh, easy. Only yesterday that I realized that the, the, they said the road has been finally, there is a way out for people to access Kumba and Boya. Because I have a friend who visited me yesterday. Now, coming from Boya, what is the situation in the southwest of the country, knowing fully where that part of the road has been blocked because of insecurity? Of course, there will be economic uh, consequences to the population and uh, health consequences because for, as a result of not having access to the hospital, if, imagine if you are short now, you need special attention, and if there is no way to take you to the hospital, obviously you will die. So there is economic and life consequences as well. Yeah. Recently, you traveled to the BLM division, one of uh, the divisions that have been most affected. But let me find out from you, one of your elites uh, quote, uh, so mentioned that uh, people in the BLM living in bushes is not because of insecurity. He says the culture of a BLM man is to live in the bush. How do you assess such a statement? Uh, <laughs> I strongly, to my own opinion, I strongly disagree that it is a culture for people like uh, I'm from the BLM and I don't think that is a part of our culture living in the bush but uh, I do believe that uh, maybe that is his own personal opinion of looking at it. Can we give some credibility to such an opinion? Uh, I don't think, uh, maybe there are people that will always say A is right and there are people that will always say B is wrong so as for me I said that is not my culture. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's receive uh, Lambert Kevin. You are a correspondent to Canada International, uh, Canada English, and the equally sweet FM radio based in Kumbu, in the northwest region of the country, Boy Division. Lambert Kevin, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Dominic, and it's a pleasure being here live in the studio uh, after contributing, uh, what do I say, on camera. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You are here. We are happy to receive you today. You have been on the field monitoring the situations out there. What can we say is uh, the situation in Congo today that is in Bui Division in Geneva as far as uh, the anglophone crisis is concerned? Thank you so very much. You know, everybody, uh, all the anglophones, anybody living in Kumbu or in the north and southwest region, and even some who care here in Douala, we know very well that it is very rough. It is a very rough terrain. We, as reporters, we have seen the worst days of journalism. Let me tell you that some, in some areas, you are being prohibited to bury. No access to information. Even when you try to report what you have gotten from reliable sources, because we don't talk because we want to talk, when you try to investigate to get exactly what is happening, you are being accused of. I cannot tell you the number of threatening messages that I receive every day. So it is very rough. But what we want to tell the population is that we are there to make sure that the population know exactly what is happening and how it is happening. We are not there to judge. But it is very rough. Everybody is afraid. Nobody is sure of the neighbor. Anybody who tries to say that uh, they are not afraid is pretending. He either wants to please somebody. Because I, for one, I'm afraid. We can talk here in Douala, but let me tell you that going back, you know, we have discussed these things all over, all over and again on phone, on camera, and unfortunately when you drop a call, somebody say, 
take care of. This thing is not more than an crisis you are seeing. It is now hate. Somebody can uh, can take a pretext of uh, doing what the person can do to you in the pretext of the Meanwhile, it is an, an opportunity for those for, for those who hate because now, I'm talking about to take that, advantage to do what they want. This to do. week you reported about four persons that were kidnapped in Oku, uh, that is in the division of the Northwest, and there was still controversy either. The kidnap was linked to the Anglophone crisis, or they were just uh, fighting off a chief tense issue. Uh, what has become of uh, the four persons that were taken out? It's coming back to what I was saying that it is already hate. You know, when something happens, everybody wants to report. Everybody, I, I used to say, everybody now has become a journalist. On social media, you frame a story, you post it, everybody is clapping. Hey, this is what is happening. Sure. Then why? It, it, you know that. Something, uh, uh, this word is a word of war, and there have been war in Cameroon. I want to say war because in Pakistan, you have pictures that you can frame and edit. Photoshop is there, you edit, you put on social media, everybody sees it. Something happened in Oku, people were kidnapped. Two of them, members of uh, a vigilante group that was created in Kuvu, in Oku. But investigating to report exactly what is happening, others are telling you that no, you know, it is about a chieftaincy title, you know, you are not clear of what has happened. But the issue is that people have been kidnapped by whosoever still to be verified. So we continue to trust uh, journalists that investigate to bring out the truth. Time for us to welcome Barista Michelle Doki. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I guess you have another title after the uh, National Convention of the Emirates Party. Yes, uh, I don't know if that's a title. I, I, I take it more a as position. a responsibility. responsibility sure. <laughs> and uh, I've been entrusted uh, with the responsibility of uh, um, animating the women's movement of the party as first vice president behind my dear colleague, uh, Mrs. Nispa Awasun. Uh, living in, in Baminda. Congratulations then. Thank you. Now, uh, MRC party in Bamutu's division of Namigate is so well. Uh, your party was supposed to organize a political rally there. That was last month. It couldn't work because uh, the division officer gave the authorization of the ceremonial ground you were supposed to use to the CPJM party that same day, that same time. And the militants of your party there, they staged a protest, though yielded no votes. Yes. The political rally have been postponed to the 7th of July, if I'm not making a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the relationship between militants of the opposition and those of the ruling party in the Babutus division? I think um, the, the problem is not so much a relationship between militants. Mm -hmm. we, we would be uh, misleading our uh, viewers if we were, we were saying that. I think we, ha we have, and I would link it to the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest, we have a, an opposition between the government and the people. And you have um, a lot of illustrations of this opposition. What is happening in Bambutos, happened in Kunki, happened in uh, um, um, what they call O Plateau. The same story all the time. When uh, the president of the uh, CRM went to bed, what was the same story all the time? Every time. We want to gather and talk to our people about our vision of the development of this country. You have a government official, subdivisional officer, um, a DO, governor, who says you can't, you can't access this area, a mayor. Those are people who are there to make sure that the government will not be um, facing the reality of Cameroon now, which is that we no more trust them. That is as simple as that. So. Um, um, we don't want to say it is between militants of CPDM and militants of CRMs or militants of the ruling party and it because the militants also are lost in that situation. But we, we have situations the where when the ruling party want to organize something as such, it goes on history. The, the, the reality is there was nothing to be organized by the government. Most of the time you would discover that the uh, ruling party was not about to organize anything did that in reaction. And this is a, a good sign and we should thank our people because this is a sign that finally we are about to come with that change 
that we were longing for, that we have been longing for, for, for so long. This is a sign that finally the government understands that we are able to bring about that change. And I think um, this is this should lead us to, to remain strong okay. and, and um, confident in the fact that we will get through this. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Let's welcome Adu Karin. You are an IT engineer and an equally civil society activist based in Bamenda in the northwest of Cameroon. Thank you for coming, sir. Thanks for having me. I must say it's uh, a great time having you once again leaving Bamenda to do a lot to participate in the program. Uh, you are equally Muslim and the, uh, the Feast of Ramadan has just been celebrated. What can we say have been the major message from us uh, after such a religious uh, practice of uh, fasting and the praying, I believe uh, Muslims were praying for the for peace to return the country. What can we say is a take home message after such an exercise? Okay, let me begin by praising God and I ask Him to send His blessings upon His messengers, last of whom is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, I want to say I'm very uh, elite at sharing the panel with uh, such fine gentlemen and a woman. Uh, yeah, talking about Ramadan, yeah, many Muslims have prayed. Um, uh, differently for Cameroon uh, but generally our religion is not about Cameroon but since we live in Cameroon so we have to pray for Cameroon yeah the general message especially coming from the Northwest has been that of justice and peace not just peace we're longing for, for peace and justice not just um, uh, um, cosmetic peace because we understand that real peace is, is not the absence of war but the presence of justice and when you read um, the Quran and the Bible it, it is very clear in those books that um, it's all about peace, but peace that goes with justice. God, God is just, and in Islam, uh, one of the attributes of God is Salam. Salam, the name of Islam itself means peace. So it has been that of, 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 of peace. That is the overruling thesis of the, of, the, of the message after Ramadan. But uh, if time were to be given to me much, I would expound on what we mean by peace so that nobody gets confused. Maybe you come briefly. It's very important here. Okay, um, let me try. Yeah, uh, predominantly, um, if we, when we read the book of Matthew 5, 9, we're told that um, um, blessed are the peacemakers, so because they'll be called the children of God. Uh, you should notice that the Bible didn't say peace lovers, peacemakers. It means everyone has to engage in the process of bringing peace. And if there's no peace in Cameroon, we, we need to start asking um, uh, what happened. Uh, Cameroon was built on lies. Uh, I Republic du Cameroon and Southern Cameroon, um, whatever relationship they had in the beginning was based on lies. It, it has never been, um, been rectified and it has never been articulated as much as the past two years. And when it was articulated, we, no, we now have the situation that you know. Thousands of Southern Cameroonians are dying, fleeing in the bushes, rotting in the bushes with their children. That is injustice. So uh, you can't now start talk, talking about peace without addressing the root cause. Okay, we'll come to that. We'll come to addressing the, the root cause uh, when we discuss our main topic for this day. Time for us to get what newspapers have been writing about this week in the country, put together by Maureen Day. Government is brought a little over 12 billion francs CFA to assist victims of the Anglophone crisis. Newspapers in Cameroon handle the story differently. To the Nouvelle Expression newspaper, government has break its two years silence, though the situation has already degenerated with more than 160,000 people displaced, hundreds killed, and more than 73 villages reduced to ashes. To the Post newspaper, the government has not taken into consideration the loss of people killed through the use of bullets, flames, and torture. In the newspaper, thinks government is negotiating to postpone democracy. The paper writes that the note in the social media purportedly signed by President Paul Bia to the presidents of the Senate on the possible extension of the mandates of MPs is in a bid to test public opinion on the issue. To the Star newspaper, there is consultation between the executive and the Senate for such a move. Many have suggested that the present insecurity context does not favor elections. The post throws more light on this scene. Movement of people from Boya to Kumba in the southwest region remain paralyzed for several days as gunmen battle with the military. 
what has become of the 4 billion franc CFA public investment budget for the BLM division six months into the year 2018. The poll says exaggerated insecurity in the division has scared all contractors in the division, thereby promoting the enclave nature of the division. La Nouvelle Expression presents the reaction of Jean Maria Tangana Mebara on the Anglophone crisis. The former SG at the presidency of the Republic, now serving a prison term in Yaoundé, seeing the Anglophone problem is an age old one that demands a permanent solution. To Eden newspaper, the crisis is becoming more complex with secessionists that are practically in control of some localities in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. To Informate newspaper, Barisa Keremona and Professor Maurice Camto, 2018 presidential candidate, lacks credibility by reporting the president to foreign powers over the crisis. The Speaker of the National Assembly says he has never taken his former bodyguard to court for attempting to eliminate his life. Lady Sahel newspaper writes that Honorable Kavaye Yege Jibril has denied the three years court trial against Buba Simala. He earlier accused in 2015 of planning to kill him. In sports, the Nouvelle Expression writes that the Teranga Lions of Senegal are portraying the football pass of the black continent. To the paper, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia and Nigeria bowed to their respective opponents during their opening march. U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon returns Cup to the country in Russia. despite rumors of escape. The Post newspaper ex Thank you very much, uh, Maureen T, for putting together what newspapers have been writing about uh, this week. We start our major topic this day. We are talking about the Anglophone crisis. Government humanitarian efforts stands at 12.7 uh, billion francs CFA. That is the announcement made uh, this week by the Prime Minister Philemon Yang. He launched an 18 month emergency humanitarian assistance plan for victims of the Anglophone crisis in the northwest and southwest of the country. The government says the money will be used to reconstruct areas demolished or destroyed in the course of the crisis, equally assist the refugees that are seeking uh, safety in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as well as internally displaced persons in the country. That's the major topic we'll be discussing today. Let me start with you, uh, Adu Karim. The government announced this uh, plan in the 34 page document presenting or uh, presented by Prime Minister Phil Boyang. He says uh, the plan, well executed, will bring about a conducive environment to promote a living together. How do you see the practical nature of implementing this plan during this period? Well, thank you for asking me that. Um, I'm really, really taken aback that um, uh, a Boban, uh, someone who studied in Sipsi Valley like uh, PM Philemon Young, uh, so I'm pretty sorry. I'm taking aback that he will be on a table that comes to such a conclusion. After having gone through Protestant education in, in Sipsi Valley and having a fine career abroad in Canada and coming back, I'm really surprised. This is um, even, it, it doesn't take any skyrocketing or any science skyrocketing to know that it is very, very a clumsy idea. It is like putting the cart before the horse, if you ask me. This is absolute nonsense. But this reminds me of one person. If I were a Christian, who you guys believe today in prophets. I don't believe in any prophets. The last is Muhammad. I would say uh, Honorable Webay is a prophet. On the 16th of December 2016, he said a couple of things in the National Assembly of uh, Cameroon, and all of them, none of them has failed. None. This is the last of uh, his statement. He said they will rape you, they will kill you, they will jail you, they will torment you, and then they will throw a few bones so you guys can fight with it. This is exactly what the government of this country is trying to do. They are killing Cameroonians, they have set them ablaze, they have done everything with them. Who burnt these houses? The military. This is not any news. It is common sense now and common knowledge in Cameroon. Who are killing? They are killing their own people, the very people who contribute money to buy them arms and uniforms. And now you bring 12.7 billion. Is that the price for Southern Cameroon life? To do what with? I don't care. Let's assume the seven point, the twelve point seven billion bills what you've destroyed. What about the lives that were killed, taken yesterday? You shoot unarmed civilians 
in a taxi simply because they say they are anglophones? What do you do with them? How do you, how do you place them? Those that have died, who is going to take compensation from them? This is nonsense. That is uh, from emotion. Let's look at it practically from a managerial point of view, uh, from an administrative point of view. It is nonsense. And you and I know this country. They are never going to put 12.7 billion down. It's an 18, 18 month 18 spent months crap. Project. It is never going to happen, sir. This is a way to put some more bones in the mouth of the selfish Anglophones already who have been selling their own people to eat some money. They are still going to share this money, do a few cosmetic um, uh, solutions. It is not going to work. You don't solve ideological problems with money or with power. It has to go with ideology. You need to sit on the table and talk. Cameroon has refused to talk. They have killed people, they have displaced people, people are missing, people have become refugees in their own country, some are in exile, and then you want to produce some 12.7 billion. Oh, we know that Victoria produces $3 million per week, net profit, not net income, per week. And after 56 years, you want to throw 12.7 billion, uh, billion of our lives wasted? This is insult. It is not late. Our country needs to get back. This government has to get back on their drawing table. Um, um, a respectable Cameroonian, whom I respect, I still do, though with some limit. Peter Mapani Mosange was in the Northwest and Southwest gathering information. He did it. According to me, he, he did his job because I was there when he listened to all of us. I was one of the speakers. He didn't interrupt anyone and he assured us that nothing is going to happen to anyone who said anything whatsoever. So this 12.7 billion, is this the result of the investigation he made and submitted to the government? And that is a big question many are asking. You just mentioned something there, this is an ideological uh, war that needs to be tackled. I don't, don't look at it and probably uh, maybe a political, to give a political solution to a political question. Uh, Ernest, we are just talking about uh, this issue. What do you say about people who think that government will have called for a ceasefire first? The two groups, secessionists and the military, drop their arms before engaging in such a project. Yeah, I do see the the upcoming uh, proposal from the government as an insult to the smart people intelligence, because I realize that you, as a safety officer, there are some procedures that like we say like acute and chronic. When you come to crisis, in acute form, it's like symptoms. At the early stage of this crisis. They would have invited Cameroonians that have the ability to analyze. Even like uh, he just mentioned, uh, the, uh, Honorable, we, uh, okay, Honorable Weber, as he, as he said in the yeah. parliament, people would have listened to him and then follow some of his ideas and try to see how they can resolve this thing. Now it has come to a chronic stage where it becomes something that is urgent and you can just go to like somebody cannot have an accident and the only thing you offer to that person is like bringing food to that person how do you expect that person to welcome you there is no amount of money that can solve this problem if the necessary uh, if the only way and the, the smart way is using a pen and a paper there is no amount of money that can replace that formula uh, Barrister Michel Doki, many people have criticized the government for keeping silence uh, following the plight of refugees and internally displaced persons in the country. Now the government is planning to disperse uh, the sum of 12.7 billion francs CFA to reconstruct villages destroyed, houses, uh, schools, churches, markets, and equally assist these internally displaced persons. Many people are still criticized. Yes, and you find that strange. The reason why we don't is that the first thing you do when you want to help someone is to ask that person, what is the kind of help needed? And you respond by giving to the person what the person asked. Nobody asked that their life be destroyed. What the people have been asking to the government is we want a change in the way this country is being ruled. The answer was wrong. We want the head of the state to negotiate with our representative. The answer was no. We want to be able to um, manage our lives. Some people said that, 
And the government started saying, everyone there basically is a terrorist, secessionist. They started throwing um, names, insults, threats, um, now bullets, destruction, at people who were saying what they think about the way the country is being ruled. And now they come back with money. And of course we have that question, money for what? This is again and again and again not answering the question. And we need an answer to that question. We need, if we don't get an answer, we need to take a decision, make a decision as a people what we are going to do with our country. Because after all, it is our lives that are being destroyed. It is our children, and I want to stress on that, it's not only Southern Cameroonians, as you want to call them, that are being um, killed. Young gendarmes are being killed. And we don't want to give the impression that um, they did that purposely. Poor men, they are just trying to end honestly their lives and obeying to others. The real problem is that those people ruling the country started a war among us because this is the way they found to remain on seat. While we are shooting to one another, we are not tackling the real issue of this country. This is the reason why people are criticizing. People are criticizing because it's not about 12 billion that have not reached the destination, by the way. Remember in 2015, Boko Haram, everybody was around saying, we need support. And Hundreds, if not thousands of Cameroonians opened their pockets and their of art. Billions <laughs> were contributed. You know the money never got to that place. You know after one year, in 2016, they threw us at us, at our face, as usual. We are going to investigate to understand what happened. And you know in 2018, we still don't have the results of the investigations. And now, they are coming back, and, they, and as you say, sir, they are throwing arrogantly our own money. Because let's remember that, let's be clear, a minister does not make money. A minister uses the money businessman, Cameroonian, those who are being killed, Taxpayers. have contributed. Yeah. And they are asking them, you contribute two million. The salary of a minister is not even one million per month. And in 24 hours, 236 millions on the table. And nobody wonders where is the money coming from. How should we feel as people to see that our money is now throwing officially? Because officially, this is saying this is the, the producers of corruption, embezzlement. We are putting it on the table and we, we would use some of it to reconstruct churches, houses, farms that we have destroyed. Of course, this is what we, we should criticize that. But more importantly, we should decide what we are going to do to tackle the issue. We should understand that not only um, is the money not welcome, but killing of Cameroonians is not welcome because it is serving their purpose. That would be our take on it. Yeah, Mr. Dominic, please, one minute, just one minute, these things uh, be, be, before you get to my brother. Madam, um, um, sorry just to interject. It's not how I want to call it. That is the way it is. It is Southern Cameroon. Okay. It is not how I want to call it. That is the name of that territory. That is to All begin right. with. I and secondly, on that. <laughs> you, you couldn't, I, think, I think we have more serious You couldn't, you couldn't, fact. you couldn't. That is, that is the fact. You couldn't. It's a historical fact. It's Southern Cameroon. And secondly, the young gendarmes take orders to shoot at people, I, because I, you try to justify that. No, I'm not. And I'm, 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 I'm not justifying. And I'm coming. Let me finish. I'm coming from the northwest. I'm coming from the northwest. These guys act I'm like colonial in masters. The sir. They act like colonial masters. They don't understand the spirit of the law. So if I ask you to go and kill your mother, you'll do it. These guys act like colonial masters. They shot at southern Cameroonians for eight months before they retaliated. You don't do this. You don't do this if we are one and indivisible. If I'm your brother, nobody would give me the order to kill you. I if would I, shoot, I will paralyze your leg. I will paralyze your leg. 
I'll paralyze your hand and then I'll arrest you. I won't shoot you on your chest. I won't shoot an old man through the mouth. I won't shoot a lion who has lost the face and call that taking others. We have, and this is the problem. If we don't face this thing the way it is, we are not going anywhere. And Southern Cameroonians have been able to step up, push away politics, push away serious intellectualism, and look at common sense. And where does common sense and logic point? That there is common sense in everything, including the rule of law. As a military officer, you're trained to arrest. This is the first thing. You have rubber bullets against unarmed people. I was there on the 27th of September, 1st of October till today. So um, I just wanted to correct that quickly. Yeah, just, just to mention that uh, the military men are drawn from all parts of Cameroon. They are equally Anglophones and the yes. Francophones put together in the military that are executing orders uh, from above. Uh, Lambert Kevin, let me just come to you. Uh, Barrister Michel Doki just mentioned there that within a split of an hour, 236 million francs CFP was already on the table in Yaoundé, uh, put together by elites of the northwest and the southwest region of the country. Uh, you that you are on the field, a reporter on the field in the division of the northwest region of the country, if you have this 12.7 billion francs CFP, is it possible to go execute this project on the field right now? First of all, I would like to say this is another, this is the second part of contributing money in Cameroon that's coming. You know, when Boko Haram started, there was whatever, just like this. Yeah. Where is the balance sheet? Another money is coming, contribute money. I'm not refusing they can contribute. Because I know that nobody will give an account of this money. If at all it will be used. Who is going to go there to give the money to who and where and how? We should not just be talking because people are giving money. Are giving. They, what I want to know, and to be very frank, Please, I want to know something, Dominic. The issue is not, they have bank accounts, they have their money, some even more with the money on their suitcases, in their cars. I'm not refusing. My problem is, this money, is it not another way that tomorrow you hear the government announcing that some people have embezzled money and they will be caught up, arrested and locked in monkey houses? Is it not going to be the case? It is going to be. We have suffered and we are still suffering. Let me tell you that what I am saying now, nobody in Bui will like it. Ask me why. Let me tell you something. We have been prohibited from saying the truth. And that's why when you talk on air, the moment you leave or when you see your report passing, the next minute somebody is calling you and say, hey, you know that this thing is not more anglophone crisis. So where you are living, be very careful. You know, I have, when they talk about gendarmes going up and coming down, you know, some of them, they are my friends, and they are our brothers. They are not a different human being. Yes. But the way some do behave like goddess, I don't like it. Now, this Anglophone crisis is started since 2016. If you have asked the government, how much have you used? It is above 12 point something million, billion. Come each cartridge, how much is the cost of a bullet? You are, if you are a mathematician, you tell me. How much? Then my, my problem is not even the money they are contributing or whatever. How do we stop this thing? That should be the next thing that government will be yes, thinking. Please, yes, I'm coming. We, yes, I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. Because when we say somebody is, uh, the, the, uh, an announcement was, was made and in a few minutes, Somebody's giving 200 or 2 million. It's not surprising to me. If you have gone to some government residential, residential houses, you will see it. There are some rooms that you don't get there. Even their wives, they know. What is there? It can be money. So people are arrested and... Uh, how many ministers are in the, in, in the monkey house now? So many of them. Okay. And some have been arrested and they have seen money in their ceilings. So it is not about money. My problem is we really need peace. There was a test, I want to give you a testimony. It was some few days ago. I had a, I had a patient in, the, in a clinic around a, a checkpoint. And only a stone threw from the clinic, it was a checkpoint. When I arrived there, I begged on them, allow me to pass and see my GGO system was operated upon, operated upon. 
they start saying, oh, no, you need to yeah, present. You're talking about the military. Yes. Okay. I presented my ID card. And they, they, they said, my bike rider should present his own ID card. We presented the thing. They asked for license. We said, no, we heard it up since she was operating and we were not around and forgot the license. Please, I'm pleading on you. Just, this is the clinic. Allow me to go there. Do you know what happened? The gun was cha cha cha. I said, please, I, I don't care to die. But my problem is, I want to see my junior sister before she dies. Oh, God. We had a tussle there with the military. Kind of and I had to call the SDO director and say that, sir, it has gotten out of hand. How can you know me very well? We move around with the SDO. We do this, we do this, we do this. Now, these people want to show me because I want to go and see my sister who was operated yesterday. The oh, SDO wow. gave an order and we allowed to pass. So the military has taken this Anglophone crisis as a pretext to maltreat. Not all of them, because in Kumu only a few are reckless. The problem is that they are changing them all every day. Every day. And this military, we shouldn't be saying that they are a bad people as such. They are still our brothers. The problem is that they should limit the way they are doing the thing. And oh. uh, those that are watching now are saying you are lucky because you had the telephone number of the SU directly. There are thousands and millions of Cambodians that don't. they don't have this contact account to call and they make their way through. Uh, we are talking about uh, elites that contributed uh, millions of francs CFA within the twinkle of an eye. The question people are asking is, where was this morning, two years back, that they were not able to contribute and help their brothers? They were waiting on somebody to instruct them to do so. I do want to believe that some people like uh, to be publicity. When things come up, your brother is sick, you cannot help. I'm calling you every day, you are, uh, you are a minister, um, you are my brother, you are my father, or you are my uncle. I call you, sir, I need 10,000 to complete my school fees, you are not able to provide. But um, some of them will be surprised to hear that uh, they are the one providing millions. So it really means that you are you don't you really do not care about the necessary things that matters. But you do the, the care about publicity. The question asking today is: Are they and contributing out of goodwill? It's not or goodwill. They if there is any person from, working from on this thing for a good, others. if you want to talk about goodwill in this anglophone crisis, any goodwill person is that one who is looking at the root cause of the problem, because you can't stop a problem. On the way, you have to first of all find where it got started. Then from there, you have to know how, what possibilities are there to be uh, to put in place to manage the crisis. You can't go to solve the crisis where without knowing the cost. So the person with the goodwill will only want to look at the cost of the problem, identify the problem, what is the cost, how can it be handled, and what is necessary for it to be handled. Not money. Money is the last thing to do. The last thing to do, you are just coming from uh, Fontem. You visited Fontem recently, and equally, uh, Libya LM Division, Menji, and other places. When you look at the situation on the field right now, yeah. uh, how can we execute a project there if we have the money? Is it practical? <laughs> My brother, that is yours. If somebody listening to you and telling you that money can do anything, this thing that they even when they mention money is provocation. It's provocation because some of these our brothers and sisters that are in the bushes, it's not because they lack money. They have money in the bank, but they cannot assess it. They have food in their homes, they cannot assess it. But what again are you doing pronouncing? An, is there any amount of money that cannot solve, or she doesn't have, or he doesn't have? The problem is not the money. The problem is the accessibility and the possibility of using the money. So when we look at the problem, we analyze it, we come out with procedures that are good enough to handle, to be to produce our solutions. It's not about, because when you talk about Fontem and the BLM in particular, there is no accessibility as of now. There are people stuck in Cham for more than uh, one week now. They have not been able, to, even the corpse that was supposed to be taken down and buried on Saturday, it was brought back and put in the mortuary in, in Cham because there was no access. Oh. To, to, to reach the... I mean, the cause that has been ad addressed from uh, Bafusam, put in the vehicle to go and bury, you cannot imagine that the road is blocked at a certain area in Gunding because people were retaliating the, uh, as a result of what happened in the uh, between the, the two neighboring uh, villages. So they were retaliating and there was no, uh, there is no access. Even all around the BLM now, there is no access. So what can money do in that position? Would money go and open the road? What we need now is intelligence. It's not money, because you have to invite people who has the ability to analyze the situation and bring solutions. Not money. That is my point, because now there is no way you can reach Fontem or the BLM or any part of the BLM. Everything is blocked. Mm -hmm. Barista, you just listened to testimonies there about how the situation on the ground 
is not really the best uh, to execute anything as far as a project is concerned, though uh, the money might be there on the table. What do you expect should be done, at least to count the situation before any other process of reconstruction will take place? The, the first thing we should do is to um, understand that passion is not more useful than, um, than money in that situation. A life taken is a life taken. And um, we strongly believe in CRM that we can't say one life was rightfully taken by a bullet and one other life was not rightfully taken by a bullet. We are there talking about the name of our country. It is something that we all inherited. We were not there in 1961. We were not there in 1884 when Germans came or when this place was called Cameroon after Rio dos Camarões. We were not there. We inherited something. And yes, we can have a conversation about the way we live today and decide that we want to change what was in the past. There's always been change. And Southern Cameroon became something. That also is part of the history. The thing that saddens us is that this conversation and the way some of us are driving it is increasing the issue. Of course, it is right, and we've always, always said that, that it is right to say what the military has doing in those regions is unspeakable. We have uh, received reports that above 60 villages have been burnt down in those areas and this is unacceptable. As a Cameroonian, as a mother, as a political leader, I found it outrageous, scandalous, unspeakable. Now, how are we going to stop that should be our obsession and our obsession and the reason why we are saying enough to everyone, including the military, is that this is the way to avoid other young girls being raped. For as long as we will keep saying, you are wrong, no, it is you, no, it is you. Some poor villagers, some poor men, some poor mothers who continue to be victims of what is happening. That is my contention. Now, what are we going to do? Uh, as I said before, this is our lives. We are talking about our own lives. There's no president of the republic, no minister that owns this life more than us. If they are not capable of fixing that issue, and now we know for sure, certain, they are not capable, then let us resolve that issue ourselves. We can do that. The thing we are starting, and I'm talking here as a a fellow Cameroonian, we are starting to think that one uh, gesture that will, will be appreciated is that the president of this republic, who is the most responsible person, the first person responsible for this, because we entrusted him with our power to make sure we live in peace, yes. and he's failed, well, hopefully, should stand up and resign. This should be the least to be expected from him at this point of time. Now, how are we going to resolve, how are we going to avoid tomorrow, the day after, people again being killed? The vacuum. That is something we can tackle. And I think we can do that by talking about what is the most important. The most important is that we remain alive. If we are dead, we cannot discuss about federalism, secession, Amazonia, Cam um, uh, Cameroon, La Republic, or something else. We need to be alive for that. First of all, let's make sure the people we're talking about remain alive and they can reconstruct what have been has been destroyed, uh, destroyed so far. Then we can talk about the future of the country. Unfortunately, after the announcement of uh, the Prime Minister of the emergency humanitarian plan, killings and the brutality continue in the two English-speaking regions of the country. I do carry a total of 15 ministries We constitute an ad hoc committee to manage this 12.7 billion francs CFM. And the, the ad hoc committee will be headed by the Minister of Territorial Administration. Many people think that uh, the personality of the Minister of Territorial Administration in the country today 
does not guarantee any success in anything in the country. What's your take on that? Well, any, any, any human being who stayed in Cameroon for the past 10 years or 20 years uh, wouldn't be surprised at this. Um, it's a very confused country, and the uh, Republic of Cameroon can do uh, many stupid things, including this one. But um, before I answer that, uh, Madam, my contention is, is, is not against yours, but that's my contention. You're talking about inheritance of Southern Cameroon or uh, talking about Vasco da Gama 1884. The Cameroon itself you, you inherited. So you want to say you inherited Cameroon, but we should not inherit a Southern Cameroon? No, th this is wrong. And uh, the country's name today is La Republique du Cameroon. La Republique du Cameroon existed before 1961. And after 1972, they came together, Southern Cameroon, La Republique du Cameroon. Where is Southern Cameroon? And if you say we should, we should let's, let's just drop that, let's look for the solution, it begins there. People must realize that these were two people. If you can't start pointing it at that fine fingerprint, Ma'am, I'll tell you something. When you, 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 you being a lawyer, you know this. When there's a c crime and a police investigator comes, you and I being the lay people, we're seeing the dead person. We say, okay, but what is this police doing? Why doesn't go and start with that dead person? But he's looking for strat of hair. He's looking for fingerprints. Because those little details are, is what matter. That small fingerprint can solve the case. You see that little name, Southern Cameroon, is where you have to begin. And uh, by the way, you mentioned secession. There's no Southern Cameroon who is trying to secede. No, 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 no. You can see, call them separatists. Well, you can call them restorationists. Yeah, yeah, but secession, no, no. Okay. Well, if some, if, if somebody seceded, is is like Republic of Cameroon who seceded from the form of state in 1984. They changed it and they, they consumed Southern Cameroon. So we, we have to be careful with these technologies. Talking about this, this group of people and uh, Minister Tangaji, Man, this, 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 this is not easy. This is a man who has been accused of planning and, 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 deal, and killing all, close to 20, 21 people in Menka. And you, and, and you put him on that top. That is still an accusation. An accusation, yeah. But an accusation is serious, the lawyer will tell you. Yes. It's, it's it serious. <laughs> if, if, if out of 20 million people you're the only one accused, it's serious. But we're not saying one is guilty. And then you make him the head of managing 12.7 so billion. So the same people. Over the same people. This is bigotry. The, it begs the question, where are we going to? And it, it commits three fallacies. Fallacy of false dilemma, fallacy of equivocation, and fallacy of double co um, This is theology, if you understand what I mean. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible, and it's a shame. Very soon, an international community will speak about it, and they will call Cameroon a shithole country, or an ambassador will speak, and then we get angry. But see, this is our conduct. Cameroon has a problem. This country is suffering from a mad cow disease. Sometimes yeah. the only thing you do with mad cows, because veterinary doctors can't handle it, you slaughter it and divide it to people. I'm not saying you should slaughter Cameroon, but it's suffering from a mad cow disease. Just one second on the on Mr. Tanganji, just to, to, to chip in on that specifically. Apart from that, he's been accused of uh, embezzlement. He ha has had mm. a long story of uh, difficult relationships with money, if I can more say that. More way. And he's been mm. in jail for those kind of issues several mm. times you in see, his life. You see. <laughs> so his uh, CV does not qualify him. That is the at mere all, reason all. why we are saying that the issue we have at hand is an issue between Cameroonian people and the government. Because someone who knows that resume and life of Mr. Atanganji better than me, who would take the decision, first of all, to make it in him a minister, and then to give him 12 billion for him to manage, <laughs> the is the that problem we have in the Cameroon first place. at the moment. That person is the problem we have in Cameroon at the moment. If we tackle that issue, then we can talk about the rest. Now, Lambda KV, Cameroonians contributing money to help a particular situation. This issue of uh, the Anglophone crisis seems to be the threat. But remember, in 1994, Cameroonians were asked to contribute a huge sum of money to assist the national team to participate in the World Cup. The money till today ended somewhere, and we are told they disappeared in the aircraft. Cameroonians <laughs> have not been able to get the result of such an amount today. We are thinking about Boko Haram in 2014-2015, where a huge sum of money was contributed. By then, the Minister of uh, Territorial Administration and Decentralization, by then that was the name of the ministry, the minister was uh, Rene Emmanuel Sade, he headed such a commission. And today there is no balance sheet concerning uh, the money. Now, when we talk about Cameroonians contributing, they have not been pointed only ministers or members of government. 
other Cameroonians to uh, ask or call upon to show I mean, some sort of solidarity for people that are suffering in bushes and they're equally those in Nigeria. How do you look at the perspective on the field? Are Cameroonians are willing to do that? The person in charge of all heading this committee is the minister, before he was appointed a minister, he declared it openly that there was no problem. I would like him to come and say that I said there is a problem before handling this man. Please, I am pleading on him. Let him come out and say there is a problem. Because he said there was no problem. What are they contributing the money for? For people to embezzle. I mean, since they are arrested and kept behind bars for us to start reporting. Why do they keep on giving journalists information that this one has happened here? Should they not organize a seminar and call us to come and teach us what they know? Because everybody seems to be a journalist now. You can talk anyhow, you can say anything anyhow. It is wrong. Okay. Um, it is a very good initiative, but if, uh, the, you know, the Catholic Church started this thing already. In Kumu, the, the, uh, the Bishop of Kumbu with the parish priest of Kumbu Cathedral, they announced a special offertory session for so, so many Sundays, and a lot of money and things were given. My problem is, how do they get there? Dominique, people cannot understand. You people are living in Dwar. Tell my brother. Go to the field. <laughs> Come to Kumbu and discuss the round, this round I table. Where lost my life. life. Last week. I'm going back to Kumbu. I will tell you what is happening. I'm going back. I'm going back. For the few days I've been in Douala, there is everything. Everything is going yes, on in Douala. Really five, one, five, one, five. Yes. We are so freak where we are. <laughs> you know, when this thing started, the ghost town syndrome started. And um, stores are being locked every morning. And on special days, according to Amazonia, on special days, you can have ghost town for one week. Somebody in Kumbu who sells a basket of tomato to feed his family. This is our family. How would the person survive? When we sit in Douala, we don't think that is easy. It is not easy. The two regions, especially where we are, they are suffering. In Bermuda yesterday, I was called that this is what's going on. I, I just say, oh my dear, Kumbu, what is going to? Because, see, we the people of Kumbu, we are fond of always welcoming with two hands. Yes. I am saying so because when it started, the f I think the first one that was shot was, it was a boy from Kumbu. Ah, uh, Julius. That's right, from yeah. Kumbu. Let me tell you that it was the worst days. So far, the phone almost cried and said, why is it that whenever something bad is happening in Cameroon, it starts from Kumbu? What is, what is all this? We should do something. And for us to do something is to collaborate. That's why I started by saying that we should stop hatred. Hate speech. We should stop hate speech. Because when you say a, a Christian is a car theory, for example, Ask my brother, he will define the meaning of Kafiri. Yes. And that is an insult to Christian. A Kafiri, I think, is somebody who does not who do not know anything about prayers. And if you are praying, if you start saying that somebody is a Kafiri, you are judging the person. Just one minute, just one minute. Uh, let's correct that very quickly. Uh, you're very wrong in that. Um, Kufar, that is the Arabic root word, it means a non believer. It doesn't mean someone who doesn't know anything about prayer. So for, for a Christian, a Muslim is a Kafir. Because he doesn't believe in Christ. For a Muslim, a Christian is a kafir because he doesn't believe in one God. For a Hindu, Muslim, Christians, and everyone are kafir. So it's not an insult. So it, it, let, it, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Just, let, just, just trying to. So just, if I call you kafir, you don't feel insulted. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're calling that person. You're that way. No, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to clear something. Yeah. Oh, we are listening. Um, words without context mean nothing whatsoever. You have to put it in context. When you put it in context, there's no problem. Yeah. For all of us here. In the eyes of a Hindu or a Buddhist, we are non-believers. You're, you're using the word kafir. Translate it to English. It means non-believer. Okay. So if you tell yes. me I'm a non-believer in Christ, I, it's, not, it's not an insult. Let's, it's, it's, let's move forward with, with it. No, but it's, it's the truth. Oh, okay. Let okay. me chip into what he just said. Like, Briefly, looking yeah. at the crisis, like we said, we are seated here, and if you are not a victim to what is happening, or you have not been to where the thing is happening, you will not you know what is happening. happening. Because See. I myself... I can assure you I trek for more than six hours in the bush to arrive where to be able to have possibility of getting a car to jump or me. even it's not easy so if, when we are talking like this <laughs> because but I can not apply emotion because I feel the, uh, I go through that I have to apply the other side of it 
which is smart thinking. The, the truth is that all Cameroonians, both living home or abroad, have been affected in one way or the other. To no, the number of checkpoints now due to the crisis. We know because so many crisis. checkpoints. Uh, Barista, let me just find out from you. Prime Minister Filimoyan gave some statistics that many people have been questioning. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that uh, there are 21, uh, 21,291 Cameroonians that are living in Nigeria as refugees. Mm -hmm. You could mention that internally displaced persons in the northwest there are 6,262. In the southwest, there are 8,742 internally displaced persons. Mm -hmm. But according to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, it says that 160,000 persons have been displaced in Cameroon, with over 63,000 that are seeking refuge in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. Now, this contesting, I mean, contrasting statistics, does that mean, uh, what do we trust now, the UNHR or the, I mean, the Cameroon government on the statistics? So, uh, um uh, maybe it could help to take the, the, the emergency plan mm -hmm. because you will see in the emergency plan that they are talking about 74,900 uh, um, uh, uh, displaced persons. Displaced persons so yeah. that will help you understand how uh, Mr. Young could be serious with his own figures. And I think um, it, is, it is even... Um, not paying enough respect to the aggrieved people to talk about numbers. Because when the, mo the moment you, you start talking about people, human beings, mothers, sisters, as numbers, and you argue on the numbers, you miss the point. The point is we have tens, hundreds of thousands of people. Uncountable. Uncountable people living in the bush. And to me, uh, for example, this is a story of my neighbor telling me the other Sunday, because I live in Nimbe, that um, the family came from Fontaine. And his, uh, her cousin's house is now full. full with people coming from Fontaine. And she's cooking to go and give. And now the I feel is too responsible. Much. I feel I have something. So it has a very concrete translation in our life. We are talking and I received another message yesterday. This woman with six children um, who left um, her village and he's now with six children, no food, no clothes, nothing to do, no future, no. And this is what we are talking about and this is the, the, the situation we are trying to fix. It's not so much telling people who is right with the numbers. We're trying to avoid mothers losing their kids in the forest. There many people will think that with the Prime Minister reducing the figure, it means he's trying to distort the facts here. Yes, and again... But by the time he start reducing the figures, the yeah. amount allocated to take care of this person will definitely reduce. And the, the, and the, t and the moment you start thinking about that, is the, the amount right, is the minister doing the right thing, you're forgetting about the woman in the bush. That's our, that's our take on that. Let's forget about those people and what they're saying. They're not helping. This crisis is one of the crises they've had at hand for years. For years, we cannot trust them in solving our issues. It is fact. So we should stop thinking, commenting, uh, um, believing, not believing what they are doing or saying. We should focus on what we are doing as families, as, as human beings, as citizens, as political leaders. What are we doing? Are we getting ready for the next elections? What do we want to do with the fact that we, you mentioned something, for example, that meeting for, for, um, of the CRM. We, we, the, the national president was not involved. People in that area decided we are going to sit in, in, the, in the Mambutos. We are going to sit in the uh, governor's or um, subdivision officer's office until it gives us the authorization. We can handle our own issues. Guys, let's just handle it. We are, we are talking about yeah. refugees, uh, yes. Ernest. We are talking about where Refugee Day was celebrated, observed uh, this week. Let's uh, uh, take After it, we are the saying figures. that Amnesty International is this and that, now we are celebrating the National Day of Refugees. Seriously. Yeah, well, you and I mentioned that uh, these uh, 43,000 Cameroonians are seeking refuge in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What should be done to assist these refugees in terms of uh, providing food, water, and other things that they need at the moment before 
are we solving the crisis? To me, the best way is to, is to plead for the humble leader of the country, the president of the republic, to maybe announce this fire. That is where possibility of reaching the refugees can start. Because that, to me, that is the best way that if he can announce that there is ceasefire, and then you will see some sign of trust coming in. That is where I think the basic start should be. Now, the figures. I want to believe that there is no body that can give exact figure as, as concerned, mm -hmm. as this Anglophone crisis is concerned, because as we speak, as we speak, every second, the figure is rising. Mm -hmm. So nobody can give the exact figure. So I believe that we should uh, assume that the number we know yesterday has increased today. So it should not be less than the number we know yesterday. Yeah, right there. Uh, Karim, we are talking about uh, refugees assistance. Government has, is announcing to assist refugees and internally displaced persons, but we have seen private individuals, foundations, that have been going to Nigeria to offer food without making an announcement. We are thinking about the Aya Aya Foundation that have been to Nigeria four times, giving some material things to these refugees. Why should people wait until make announcement, go to the media, talk about it when the refugees on daily basis they need something to eat, something to drink? Yeah, frustration, hypocrisy, and um, what you could say, bad faith. Um, First of all, let's try to see who a refugee is, according to the United Nations High Commission for Refugee. There is someone who has possibly been, uh, been, been, been caused to leave their land as a result of oppression, as a result of fear of a political oppression, as a result of um, fear of death, and so on and, and so forth. And this is exactly the definition of what is happening in Southern Cameroon. And I'd like us to put our conversation in context. We're talking about refugee today, we're talking about two, uh, two, 28.7 billion because of Southern Cameroon. It has to be that way. It's not because of Cameroon. We have to put it there. If there's a primary um, a victim of all this situation, they are called Southern Cameroonians. So we have to put it in that context and then we look at it at large. Yeah, SDF some four months ago, I'm not a political uh, supporter. Yeah, we understand. I, I really hate <laughs> talking about but But SDF some four months ago, decided to recollect themselves and go help the Aya, um, Aya Foundation, foundation. To, to, to try and give our brothers and sisters some food and clothes. This regime refused. And how many people have died in between four months and now? How many more women have put to bed in very demeaning situations? It's horrible. They don't want to do it. Why? Simple reason. Uh, man, we have to face this. When you look at the shootings, if you can take some, some, some analysis, it's targeted. The youth of Southern Cameroon is being targeted. The numbers in this is dwindling. Most of the people in the bushes are youths. You can see there is no need for fear of anything. You can see with, uh, without any doubt, all written in the war, that there is target killing. Unless we start looking at it from that perspective. I'm talking about the figures. Yes, we can approximate. I agree with him totally. Nobody can say this is the exact number, but we can approximate. How can we approximate if you live in these places and you know the total population of Bamenda, for example, when you walk in the streets of Bamenda, you can already say, okay, half is gone. But what you can't say is how many are in the refugee camps and how many are dead, how many are in the prisons. You can't know that. But sir, today we have 100,000 plus as refugees. We have more than 78,000 displaced. And you can rest assured that about 1 million Ambazonians can, uh, sorry, Southern Cameroonians cannot come back to Cameroon because they spoke about their dying ones from abroad. So they are also refugees. By the way, they went as a result of a refugee situation because they, some of them ran uh, during a SDF crisis. Some of them ran because of social and economical um, 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 uh, hardship. Conflict. So they are there. And now they can't come back because of exile. So th this, this, whole, this whole drama, this government has to wake up. Like you said, like you said, the first thing um, this government must do, I don't put it on Mr. Bia because I think he doesn't run this country. When he declared his war, you've seen drones, Trump. You guys say he's a psychopath. He said so many things without looking at any paper. It comes from here, which means he masters it. Whether he's right or wrong, but he masters his stuff. Our president came out from a plane, sent his hand from his pocket, removed a paper, and read to declare war. 
<laughs> Come on. So I, I don't think someone who, who is running this country will do that. You can just declare war by saying that, okay, this is it. If you have to read it, someone wrote it for you. It's, it's horrible. So he declared this war. He, he has to call for ceasefire. On whom? On his soldiers. He has to tell them to drop their guns. And if you guys say you're Christians, I wonder. You guys are good in saying the Islamists. When you come, you journalists, the Islamists, the Boko Haram Islamists. Jesus Christ says in the book of Matthew, chapter number 26. That's why the, what the Boko Haram claims. So, so he says. says. <laughs> so he says. <laughs> so Jesus Christ says. <laughs> Jesus Christ says. And when they, when they claim, you have to vet your information, sir. Yes. Vet it. Yes. Go, go to Islamic scholars. Ask them about the, the definition of their terms. Don't just take it there and, and start talking about it. If it's about law, go to a lawyer. And, and ask them, what does this really mean, before you start saying it. If you ask many journalists what's the meaning of Islam, they don't know, but they tell you about Islamists. If you ask them what is Islam is, they don't know, but they're just saying it as they hear. It is not good journalism. Jesus Christ says, Peter, put down your sword, for he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. They carried sword, they carried guns in these cases, and they're dying by it. So he's the one to tell his people to put down their weapons. Uh, Lambert, Excuse me, he has a very good point when he mentioned President Trump. You see that in the past months before President Trump had to send a lot of insult to King Jong-un. Mm -hmm. uh, but what happened at the end? When it becomes final that they have to sit on the table, do they sit? Do they care about the insult they have been having for yeah, each other? Sure. They, they have, that is mature. That yeah, is that's smartness. Maturity, you know, no. So we are talking about negotiation there, which is very important. Lambert KV, the, the minister delegate in charge of defense, this week at the National Assembly and the Senate gave figures of military men that have been killed in the course of the crisis. He sees a total of 84 of them uh, cited both from the police and the gendarmes, the soldiers. But the funniest thing is no one has cared to estimate, to give an estimate of the number of civilians that have been killed in the course of this crisis. They don't matter. The, uh, I know very well that the men in uniform, they are still our brothers. But I would like uh, them not to count people like trees or objects. Don't count a human being. It has happened. If you, if you, if you want to say you want to count whether 84 or 86, the number is still vague. Because nobody can count a human being. They have been killed. So many of them. i say so many. Maybe they are counting the ones that they know. Because after all, when they send people to uh, bring reports on the field, they don't bring the right reports. Because it's very difficult to access the place, the places where they are being killed. And that's why I want to say the number is just, just the way it is. It is not a good I, Yes, but I, I don't like people who count people by like numbers. But no one has given an estimate of civilians that have been killed in the process. Yes, you know, they are their bodyguards and uh, those who take care of them. That's why you know, you know these people. They, should, they want to take care of themselves first before any other person. Forgetting that it is a sin that they are committing. Yes. If you want to bring out a number that this is the general figure for still As a result of, of the crisis. crisis. Vala, it is better. Rather than saying the military did know, it is wrong. But I don't like people who count people like numbers. And let me tell you that if we, you know, last time when there was, uh, uh, um, there was uh, misunderstanding, I want to say misunderstanding between the Mabilas and the the in Nigeria, the Muslim faithfuls of Bui division, they contributed heavily to assist those who were uh, refugees in Atta village because I went there with them. And if we can say keep talking and talking rather than doing it like what the Muslims did, we are failing because when we are talking, we don't know who is dying now as we are talking, discussing. If you have been to the, a farm where you you will walk and carry a, a a tin of Irish potatoes under the rain, you will test what does what that means. And not very not, not very well that you are coming to your house. This it is raining; they are there. Sunshine; they are there. So it's when terrible. Part of the racism, yes. We should not be counting people. Sure. Thank you we very do much. We take a little transition. We come back. We are talking about, we have just uh, 50 more minutes left, but we'll talk about uh, the uh, absence of uh, the president not convoking the elections for parliamentary and the municipal elections that are expected to take place on the 21st of this month.
staying with us. The 21st of June 2018 was the deadline, according to the constitution of the country, for President Paul Bia to convoke parliamentary and municipal elections. That he failed to do. Many people say he has once again violated the constitution of the land. Barrister Doki, thank God we have a lawyer on the panel. What does the law say? What does the law say about what does the constitution provide when there's total silence? after the deadline of the convocation of uh, parliamentary and the municipal elections is concerned? Um, the constitution does not answer the question if the, the, the electoral, uh, if yeah, there's no convocation, what should happen? The constitution provides that the president might request the parliament to extend the mandate of the parliamentarians for when there is a, a serious crisis. I'm, I might not be very right with the translation, mm -hmm. but uh, um, th that, that, I believe, is the, is the spirit. And what has happened, thank Lord we have uh, social media, um, is that the president apparently wrote to the parliament to say, according to Article 16 of the Constitution, please vote a law to extend the mandate. The reason given, according to that paper, is there are several elections at the same time and we can't cope with all of those so please extend it which is not with this this constitutes a violation of the constitution they not equally mentioned uh, material difficulties yes this is not a serious crisis in french um en cas de crise grave they said so this is not a, a, a serious crisis um a, a problem with uh, with the, the fact that you have several elections is not a serious crisis. So if the mandate was extended, it would be a violation of the Constitution because the president himself, who asked for it, did not mention a serious crisis. Now, the mandate might be extended, and so far the parliamentarians are still normally, um, um, they, they are still, um, um, the mandate is not has not come to an end. It will come to an end only October. in October. So they might vote that, pass that uh, tattoo to say that the mandate is extended, and that will uh, put aside the issue of convoking, not convoking, uh, so far. But that um, again is why we're talking about was it right or, or wrong? We not, and that classical governmental strategy. We forget the core issue, which is, do we trust the people? We, are, we, we, we should have, we elected those people, supposedly. We elected those people as parliamentarians. So we should be the one deciding if we are, we've had enough of them or not, not the president. That is the reason why he cannot just write a letter to them and they deal with their own issues internally. That's, this is not an internal problem it should at least communicate to the nation and say this is the reason why I believe we cannot uh, hold the election. And don't forget that not only has he promised twice, 31st of December, 10th of February, all the elections will happen this year. But he asked for an increase of the budget to cope with the numerous elections um, um, plan for, for this, for this year. year. So we down the line, we now s hearing oh, too many elections, and we can't have all of them at the same time. The real issue we know that is that we cannot, in the current situation, hold elections. Thank you, Barista. Uh, and you carry many people even before. Uh, the 21st of June, many people have been saying the context in Cameroon today does not guarantee free and fair elections. So if the president is keeping silence to convoke parliamentary and the municipal elections, can we say he's listening to the call of the people? I think he's pressurized, both locally and internationally. He's, he's highly pressurized. And um, like uh, the, the barrister has explained to us, uh, he's within his legal right to call for an extension in times like this. Uh, but the spirit of his reason is what would, would go to question. What is the spirit of the reason he's putting behind? This is a place where the reason he's saying serious crisis, 
that's again going back to southern Cameroon. The reason why he's calling for an extension, this reason has not been allowed to be voiced for once mm -hmm. in that parliament. Mm -hmm. Weba today is on the run because he said it. SDF parliamentarians just on the, the 20th, again, were deserted in the parliament uh, by CPDM. The hall was empty. The whole, no, no, they, no, it, no, they were there together, and yeah. when they just raised the issue, everybody, including Canada, English journalists, took off. Are you serious? Yes. No. <laughs> or maybe Canada, but not. Uh, not, uh, not so, English, so, <laughs> so they took off. Everybody took off and they left them. So I'm asking, so this is why I say it begs the question what is the spirit of his reason? It's simple. He wants to keep his, uh, he wants to consolidate his power. That is it. He wants to find time to bribe the rest few that are a little bit stubborn. But the parliamentarians, they are supposed to carry the voices of the people. The people's voices are heard, in, are heard and consumed or consummated in through their representative. Through their representative in the parliament. This has never happened. So, I'm, I, man, these are our debates, like Madame is saying, we need to start thinking about right action. So I will drop it there, but I want to tell my brother, we, we have to count people. Because if I ask you how many people are there in your house, you tell me six. How did you know you counted? And mm -hmm. then, um, talking about this issue of social media, everyone trying to put his voice on this. Yeah, people have different responsibilities. Mine could just be this talking, you analyzing and reporting. Madame working on the field as a lawyer, trying to defend people who have been arrested. Everyone has their role to play. And someone uh, is wearing a military dress and killing his own, uh, the citizens that give him money. Fine, everyone is doing theirs. But when you talk about uh, writing and putting on Facebook, the, most, the, be the best information I've gotten on this crisis uh, is not from journalists. Yes. So we have, and if... It might be from journalists that post to on social No, get my media. point. I'm just yeah, trying to say that we have to yeah, respect yeah. journalists, but I, I don't want, um, I, I'm not comfortable hearing journalists saying that everyone has become a journalist. If that we want to say, then all of us here should denounce the Bible, especially the New Testament. Paul, who wrote 14 books in the New Testament, wasn't a journalist. He reported stops. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John reported. They were not journalists, <laughs> but, but they gave us this issue. So we have to respect all these, bring them together. What we should be doing is vetting. <laughs> Actually, I think good information comes from many sources. You want many people to speak about one thing without having the same source. And they should be right in many things that they should corroborate without collaborating. Then you know that, okay, it's correct. If Dominic said this, he said this, he said that, and all of them took them from driven sources, it's highly probable that the information is true. Yeah, right. Thank you. The so only difference now, we are not defending journalists, but the only difference is that journalists right. get uh, information, they go investigate and they publish. Mm -hmm. But individuals, they get information, they publish without mm -hmm. investigating. Mm -hmm. uh, Lambert, can on the field, when these parliamentarians, when they come back from uh, their meeting, their sessions, what are they talking about the crisis? <laughs> because they are expected now to like vote for the extension of their mandate because of the crisis. You know, a parliamentarian who would like to continue uh, benefiting from the micro projects looms, uh, if I want to put it that way, would not like to uh, to live. To live. Mm. If if at all it was voted, was it voted already? That's a still. question. It is still to the best of our knowledge. It is still, still on the process. Still, still to, yes. It is still, still on the still process. Still yeah. process. Those who will vote them, parliamentarian who will accept. There are parliamentarians who would like to continue. Who are genuinely corrupt. Exactly. Yes, yes, who yes. continue eating what it is not theirs. Yes. Because some of them, the population do not know them. <laughs> they don't know them. <laughs> Let me tell you, we, we are talking here because we are in Douala. If you want to ask a parliamentarian of a certain area where a particular locality is, is found, the person cannot tell you. He wouldn't know whether the route is tarred or not tarred. Of so, constituency. Yeah, it is good that <laughs> when you are voted by the people, you go start from the interior. Mm. A good parliamentarian shouldn't start from Kumbu. The person should start working uh, from Shukov or from wherever the person can go to in a very remote area to prove to the people that I was voted by you people. Because when it is time to vote, they vote in villages. It, they, they vote everywhere. It is not only in town. So when people just come, they fidget because their cars cannot access the areas. They are not good parliamentarians. People should know that if you are voted by a local community, go start from the local community. Don't just fidget around town in your office, in your car, and whatever. Mm. Uh, Ernest, what would you think about uh, an imminent extension of the mandate of MPs? 
I would think it's just uh, it's just like uh, an insult to the population that have been expecting much from the, the representative and having nothing as a result of having voted them to the to represent them in the parliament. No ones have there come to visit them during the crisis uh, started. And some have tried, but. Uh, Majority of the localities, they have not been visited by their men, uh, their own parliamentarians. So the now they are representative. So how do you expect such a person to hear that the, the same person who has the possibility of reporting his illness and has not been doing it is is again given another opportunity to continue as a representative? So it's some it's somehow is going to uh, like provoke the problem. I see here is the government do not uh, accept the fact that this is a generation of you that they are too smart what you the formula you used to use in it used 20 years back mm -hmm. you cannot apply it now mm -hmm. the way you think today they are too smart they don't want to allow their destiny be jeopardized by anyone they are looking at the possibility of getting to where they are aiming at so when you realize that somebody is trying to tell you that one plus one in cameroon is four and then two plus two is in another place and you know the exact truth that one plus one can never be four how do you want to consume this yeah, that is Barista, maybe the, the last question. What should we expect about the presidential elections, given that uh, it is already on the pipeline that the mandate of MPs and the councillors might be extended? What should we expect of the presidential elections? Uh, the, the, there's no provision in the constitution allowing the president to extend or to ask anyone to extend his own mandate. So mm. there's no choice. You have to do the, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot. Yeah. That is not possible unless he's trying to uh, change the constitution. I and that's a, a, a totally <laughs> different story. But on a more serious note, um, we um, are in CRM have been. Um, Raising that flag, Advocating. Since, yes, uh, last year at least, okay. uh, um, about this extension of mandate. We started uh, shouting um, last year um, that you, uh, government, please don't try this, and um, we can see it has happened. Um, now we need to, um, as, a, as a people, we need to um, um, make a call as to whether or not we find this appropriate. So we well, will not want to have elections in uh, areas where uh, villages have been burned down and, um, and uh, we cannot, uh, uh, roads are blocked, yeah. of course. Now, the question is, how do we move to the situation we want? We have to, we have to decide how we move to the situation we, we want. And we think the first, um, emergency is to bring back the peace, peace. we're asking yeah. this ceasefire we would be even bolder i think if because we uh, hear that a lot that the uh, opposition cannot unite let the people unite in asking our president to resign and once we have we have that we can uh, build the country in the way we thank want. you michelle thank you barrister michelle for accepting our invitation thank, thank you. you for inviting yeah. thank you Ernest. yeah you're thank welcome you, Karim, for you. coming down to participate in the program mm -hmm. Lambert, Kevin, thank you it's a pleasure Dominic. thank you so much thank all you. of you who watch us we thank you so much for mm -hmm. giving us your time you can watch a rebroadcast of this very edition of the program newsroom from uh, this evening from 9 p.m you watch it equally tomorrow from midday to 1 30. I am Dominic Memengwa Kimo. We are thanking all our technicians who make it possible for us to have this edition of the program news from this day. Have a nice weekend.